uh, policy and strategist, uh, strategy analyst working with the Africa Policy Institute. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank All you. All right, so we want to continue with our conversation and we still are on matters to do with elections. And the election observer group, uh, ELOG, wants the electoral agency to clean up the voters' register before the elections. In its report released yesterday, the election observer's uh, findings reinforced an earlier audit by KPMG, which had detached uh, some detected, I beg your pardon, anomalies in the voters register. The report noted that the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission maintained 171,476 voters in the register who had invalid identification cards and whose details could not be verified in the National Registration Bureau database. Now, Father Elog also wants the IBC to shed light on how many voters were included in the register from the 17,523 whose details were not found in the data provided by the Directorate of Immigration. All right, so we want to have a conversation right now here in studio. Joining me right now is Marcus Aganga. Thank you very much for joining us. He is from Elog, the organization that released that report. Uh, so talk to us about, um, first of all, how are you able to come... Uh, to this uh, conclusion about you know the dead voters and the concerns that you so far have about this register of ours or this country thank you uh, for having me here mm -hmm. uh, i think the concern of elog mm -hmm. uh, is that we're moving into an election with a register that is mm -hmm. uh, is having issues mm -hmm. and the purpose of uh, an audit mm -hmm. of any register is to serve three mm -hmm. functions number one it is to ensure that or to access the completeness of that register, whether it is complete in terms of details and other details. The second thing is to uh, analyze whether it is accurate in terms of information that it, it channels out. Mm -hmm. And lastly is to examine its timeliness. Now, when the KPMG did the, its own audit, yes. it raised issues including uh, about 2.9 million uh, records add issues that need to be looked into. Mm -hmm. Now, and in particular, they are proposing that close to one million uh, people are dead and their details are in the register. So as ELO, we are concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and if you break it down, you find a number of, a number of people mm -hmm. uh, still have their details uh, incomplete. Mm -hmm. And so as ELO, we are concerned that for us to realize a credible and peaceful, free and fair election, mm -hmm. the register, which is the basis of admission mm -hmm. to vote, mm -hmm. to exercise your right as a voter, mm -hmm. uh, is not in itself clean, then there's a problem. All right. And so then uh, we, our work as, uh, as an observation group is to mm -hmm. highlight these issues mm -hmm. and point to them that something must be done before we move to the polls in the next 30 mm. or so days. Interesting that you say that because IBC has also come out to defend itself and one of the reasons that they're saying that they cannot really clean out everybody is that uh, you know there the, are the people who uh, the details really to do with their ID numbers, identification numbers, they're really not known. So it's not really, they don't have you know the information that they need to to really strike out, uh, you know, everybody who is presumed dead. Yeah, I understand. Uh, one of the things we need to understand is that uh, it is not the IBC's responsibility mm -hmm. is to register voters. Yes. However, there is another government agency whose function mm. is to is for the registration of of mm. persons, mm. Isn't it? you know, birth and death yes. of persons. And I think the the function to register the death 
It's not within the IABC. But even those people, yeah. the CRS, the Civil yeah. Registration yes, Services, yes, yes, they yes. say that even they cannot do that because they don't have all this information, uh, you know, to do with, the, like, like I mentioned, the ID numbers. Some, sometimes the family does not report, uh, you know, the deaths ar around the country. So mm. what then? But I, I think then, because mm. I think I think there's a challenge and, the, and 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 even a disconnect, because it is true that in our country not every death is reported yes. uh, to to the to the registration agency. However. The fact of the matter is this, mm -hmm. that we have a problem. Mm -hmm. We have included a significant number of people who are mm -hmm. dead in the register. Mm -hmm. that, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. And I think there's need for stakeholders to come together. If the National uh, Registration uh, Agency mm -hmm. does not have those details, IEBC does not have those details, then something clearly must be done. Mm -hmm. Because you're moving into an election with a register that is being questioned yes. by stakeholders, yes. including the observation group, mm. uh, that please do something about it. Mm -hmm. So, and I was in a conf I was in an interview uh, with one of the commissioners, mm -hmm. and she said that the reason why they cannot expand some of these some of these numbers is mm -hmm. because they don't have information from the register of persons. Yeah. And if that is the case, then they should come out openly and demand details uh, because the, the things we are hearing, oh, we don't have this, we don't have that, we don't know the truth about it because okay. IBC. I was in an interview, and she said to, to on public interview, and she said, we don't have the details. Wow. Yeah, so I don't know whose responsibility <laughs> it is, uh, but as, 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 uh, as observation group, we are saying that, look, something is not right mm. with the register. And we are going out into an election with a register that is, uh, that is, having, issue, is having issues. All right. The other thing that uh, Fula Chebukati has said is that, uh, you know, maybe we'd, we shouldn't worry too much because, you know, you have the Kenya Integrated Electoral Management System, system yes. that will not allow dead voters to, you know, come from their yeah, graves in the morning yeah. and vote. Yeah. Um, is that a substantial and solid, re you know, reason why Kenyans should just, you know, take a, 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 a back seat? in this? There are two ways to look at it, mm -hmm. uh, Betty. On the one hand, remember there is the discussion and right now it's provided in the law mm -hmm. that we should also have a complementary system. Now, if this election would be purely uh, electronic in terms of if it's are working, mm. uh, the result transmission system is working completely. Then there'd be no need to resort to manual uh, mm. voting, and, 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 and yeah. So now the, this question is that I mean, in the event that the systems fail, then as you are aware, we'll, you, we'll go the complementary way. Mm. Which, by the way, we don't know what this means up, up to now. Mm -hmm. They were required by law to define what that means, yes. assuming it's a manual system, yes. uh, which we did in 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me how the dead won't rise and vote. Because then, what is the role of the EVID? Isn't it, 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 it identifies mm -hmm. uh, the, when you come yeah. there, your, your biometrics are taken. taken yes. But now, in the event it is manual, anyone can vote. Mm. And, and so that on the one hand, if this election was purely electronic, as was early envisaged, mm -hmm. then you can argue that uh, in the event that we reach a dead, a dead end in terms of cleaning up the register, then mm. there's another system that can further clean it. Mm. But right now that we are speaking about possibilities of systems failing, which is really true, then you cannot argue in the manner in which the, chair, the chairman is, mm. is, arguing. is arguing. Because then, you, as you know, that uh, we go manual, then there are no systems yes. in place to capture your biometric, which are unique identifiers mm. for every person. So the dead will vote if, if that happens. If the event will go manual, yeah. the chances are very high that the dead will rise up and vote. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about... Um, then what is the solution you know, for IBC? Because yeah. everybody seems to be hitting out at them. Mm. But then what, is, what can IBC do about this, you know, the, this register with all the shortcomings that you know, the CRS has, the mm. IBC now is seemingly having? What would be the best um, you know, end game to this with the register? I, I think one of the things that should really be addressed, but really, on a serious note, mm -hmm. is the integrity of the 2017 register of mm -hmm. voters. Mm -hmm. That must be addressed. We, I mean, KPMG has already out, outlined the problem. We, and it's, it's out in the public domain. IABC should come out clearly and say, yes, these are problems and this is how we deal with it. Number two, I also pity or empathize, uh, empathize with IABC because mm. it is not their role to keep records of 
deaf, dead, deaf or dead, people. Or dead people. Yeah. yeah, it's the role of another agency, mm. and that agency should also come out and say, by the way, look, this is the information all we have, mm -hmm. and we give it and make it very open. One of the things that should happen in terms of cleaning up the register is the transparency of the process, in terms of inclusivity of the process, include all the stakeholders, mm -hmm. the actors in that field, the way they are trying to uh, include everyone in the in, in the ballot printing. Mm. Even the question of the register. If uh, we're going to move into this election with the way it is, then we'll have challenges. And someone will move to court and okay. challenge uh, the outcome of that process because it was uh, defective from the very word go. And my, and my next question is going to come um, in regards to that. What happens if we go into this election with the register as is? Because at some point, you know, IBC seems on some instances, you know, they lock out their ears and it mm. doesn't matter what everybody is saying. If they decide to move on and use this register as is, what would be the, would it have a serious impact on our elections? Well, they, I mean, I think the courts will determine, but I can tell you someone will move to court mm -hmm. to uh, complain that we ran an election on a defective register of voters. Okay. And now the courts, in their own wisdom, will then treat the matter and mm -hmm. say whether the register was defective as to significantly affect both the process and the result. But I think if we move to this election, that one of the consequences that might come as a result of moving into this election in the manner at, in which the register is at, is that you, you make IBC vulnerable is you make IABC vulnerable mm -hmm. and even the credibility of the commission itself then suffers. Because then how do you run an election with a defective document? Interesting. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow is also a very big day. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're expecting that ruling still IBC is yeah. involved. IBC has been having quite a number yeah. of issues to deal with. And tomorrow we're expecting that uh, uh, ballot paper printing tender issue to be uh, brought to a close, hopefully. Um, what scenarios are we looking at? Also considering that it's just 32 days to the elections, are we likely to see Al Al Algurai kicked out and, you know, another maybe the third, um, you know, company coming into, you know, into, into the platform to actually print these ballot papers? Mm. I think from, from where I sit, I mean, Iloga has not taken a position yes, uh, so far on this officially. But uh, from, where, from where I sit, I don't think they will, uh, they will kick this mm -hmm. farm out mm -hmm. because then uh, it, it really shrinks further the preparedness of IBC. Uh, and, and I think that the fact that even Ilog already is gone, uh, Ilog is observing the printing. Okay. Uh, we're already there. So uh, you're okay. We're already there mm -hmm. in, uh, in Dubai. In Any Dubai. issues that you... So far, nothing has come out. I okay. think they traveled uh, last, early this week. Mm -hmm. our, one of our members mm -hmm. traveled last, this mm -hmm. week, early. So I think the fact that you have a number of stakeholders there, especially the ones who are not interested as it were, mm -hmm. uh, the, the civil society, <laughs> and Ilog itself is, was called by IBC to be there. The fact that uh, we have a, a number of stakeholders there, and depending on the feedback they give us when they come back, then we'll have to, I think, have to sit down and agree, really, is it something that we can ignore? Is it something, something that we can agree to work with and, and be watchful of any other... Uh, mischief mm. around it. All yeah. right. Mm. Finally, let's talk about uh, NCIC with that list. I'll ask you the question I asked my panel of guests mm. earlier on. And they've come up with a list of uh, hotspots. Even the police on the same day did that. And uh, many Kenyans are asking, you know, should you be telling us about, you know, this, uh, you know, this and these places will be affected or, you know, there's a likelihood of uh, an eruption of violence? Should you be telling us this or should you be doing background preparations to ensure that it actually does not happen? Mm. Two ways to look at it. Mm -hmm. I think one, for your information, uh, that the police are really working. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know they're really working. Mm -hmm. They're on the ground mm -hmm. and uh, they are aware of the dynamics of that area. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other way to look at it is because they are, they're just telling you that uh, know that we, we are watching. Yeah, we, are, we know what you guys are planning. We are on the ground. But are they saying that, you. Marcus? Are they saying that? Or are they saying that, whoa, these are, <laughs> the, these are the places where, you know, we are feeling there's going to be a problem. Is it, what, what is the intention of that message, really? I, I think it, 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 I think, really, I think they are also preparing themselves. Uh, I think if you looked at even the way Ilog observed the party primaries, for the first time, the, a number of, uh, a number of 
voting sense uh, registration i mean uh, voting centers were really secured mm -hmm. not but all a, num a significant number were, were really secured mm -hmm. and and you can see and at one, one of the interviews we had there with the police spokesman i yes. think you were there and, yes. and he, he really spoke about the presence and their preparedness mm -hmm. well you can argue whether they were really prepared or not but i think there was a significant presence mm -hmm. of the police mm -hmm. and i'm sure even now the, where they are seated i'm sure they're really working towards the to mm -hmm. towards ensuring that these hot spots are, are well secured that's one way but the other thing is that they, they, they are also telling because the ones who are causing violence are people like us who stay there yes so they're telling them please we know what you're planning mm -hmm. to do we know that uh, this is wrong and we are watching okay so it, it serves to deter uh, to deter uh, a number of evils that might happen at the same time Marcus mm -hmm. uh, you know yesterday I was speaking to the government spokesman yeah. uh, Eric Irai there, mm -hmm. and even him he said you know what NCIC should come and tell us is that we have uh, in in a certain village uh, you know where from where I come from mm -hmm. they've mapped out maybe one or two or three people mm -hmm. who they feel are you know are dangerous or yeah. you know would cause some chaos or mm -hmm. would influence uh, some chaos and we've mapped them up and we're following up and we're tracking them down and following their every move mm -hmm. and uh, I mean that is a better message to tell Kenya rather than the areas the areas yeah i think i think i agree i agree what, what did he say about that did he say they would do that he is the government spokesperson yet he says that ncsc should have actually done the opposite of mm. telling us this is what uh, we've been able to gather from the mm. ground and we know with the help of police yeah. we are you know we are monitoring mm. everything that's happening yeah. um or is it information that they they wish they, they're keeping to themselves it is, I mean, it's possible that they, they know the persons and they're watching them closely mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at heart. But even in Log, we have identified some of these hotspots. Yeah. Like I told you, we have over 350 mm -hmm. people in every constituency. I mean, not, but in all the constituencies, we have mm -hmm. at least two people mm -hmm. who are uh, monitoring the electoral Have they given you the, almost the same report? The, about the same report about the hotspots. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, they are telling us that, look, there are areas that you must watch. And we have shared this information with the police, mm -hmm. shared the same information with the National Gender and Equality Commission, mm -hmm. shared the same information with UIANA Platform. These other agencies that are working towards ensuring a credible process. We have shared with them. Okay. And, and it's true that uh, we are worried about the trend of electoral uh, uh, violence. Uh, All right. Yeah. Interesting. Thank mm. you very much, yes. Marcus Agenga. Mm. He's joining us from the Elections Observers Group. Observation Group. Observation Group. Observation Group. All right. Thank you very much, Marcus.